pat yourself on the back because you are right here right now for a reason. Welcome to the On Purpose Podcast, where together we will empower ourselves and others to live lives with more passion and purpose. How you doing this evening, Jared? I'm fantastic, my good friend Ali. How are you? Feeling good, feeling ready. Just had a yeah. nice fight practice with, with you and the guys earlier and ready to check off my first big goal of the year. So we're, we're about a week out, a little like 10 days away from you. Doing, uh, being able to cross that off your bucket list. It's something you've been wanting to do for a while, so it's fun to watch your journey and be part of it, getting you ready, and uh, it's going to be fun. It's, it's an experience like no other, let me tell you that, man. It's it's different. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, man. I appreciate all your help and support and coaching along the way and, and ready to get after it. Absolutely. It's just like everything else in life. If we keep our experiences to ourselves and don't share them, like, what good are they? You exactly. Know what I mean, like I, I went through my journey, and my journey was great because I had Ryan sharing with me and Steve, and and now I get to pay that back to you guys, and then someday you'll pay it back. So it's our experiences aren't meant to be kept to ourselves, and I, I think too many times people do that, and and that's what you miss out on is sharing your experience with other people so they can learn. Yeah, I love what you were saying at your book launch, man. Awesome turnout, by the way. Oh, love gosh, meeting dude. a lot of people in the community who are, are supporting you and and who believe in you and who can learn from the stories that you share. I I really liked what you had said in a in a small conversation we were having about how you wanted to share your stories and how everybody has stories. Yeah that somebody out there can learn from. So I thought that was really cool how you realize that. And, and I love how you have structured each chapter in your book because yeah. each one is a very specific story that impacted your life that I think most people are going to be able to relate to in, in some way, whether or not they had a, a very similar experience. I bet you that they've had similar results from their own experiences and and it was really cool to see, man. Congratulations. Yeah, uh, thanks. I appreciate it. it was, uh, the only word that comes to mind is humbling, you know, to to hear Andrea talk. And I know how nervous she is to public speak, to see her actually, like, get up and have her notes. And um, I didn't know that was happening. Nice. So that was pretty emotional. And honestly, just to know that we've created – and I say we because it wasn't just me. It's all of us – have literally created something – that will outlive all of us. And and like Ryan, you know, made a great impact in my life. And now his kids' his kids' his kids' his kids will be able to read and see what their family meant at one point in time. You know, and and my kids can see. And it's just uh, it's an honor to be able to share other people's stories because none of us own our own story. Like if you think about it, all of our stories are actually a compilation of everybody else's stories, and they just apply to us. And I think, for me, I was a little nervous when it released because I wanted to make sure I did their stories justice, and I made them proud in how I told it. And, and the feedback's been really good, and it's it's just humbling uh, to have actually finished it, man. Yeah. Yeah, I bet, man. Long, long goal in the making. And you said overall, once you really got to it, about a year, 18 months? Yeah, about 18 months. 18 months? Yeah. That's awesome. That's solid. So to our listeners out there, I'm sure there's going to be some on-purposers that will publish their own book one day. took Jared about 18 months, so that's that's definitely a commitment to a goal. And I hope to be able to see some more on-purpose community books published in the time coming. So now that that's done, it ties into our purposeful practice for for last week. Are you ready to die? (laughs) You ready to die now that you published a book? Uh, No, man. I got a lot more to do. (laughs) But I will tell you this. If the world ends tomorrow and today was my last day, I'm good with it. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I spent time with Andrea in the morning. I got a good workout in. I, I coached the Rock Steady Warriors, you, you know, which is a, a something that's near and dear to me, helping them battle Parkinson's. I, I, I love my time with them. I got to work out with you guys and coach you for your goals. Got to spend some time with my kids, and now we're reporting, recording a podcast. So I feel very fortunate and blessed that my days right now are, are very much what I want them to be. 
That's awesome, man. How about you? That's amazing. Me too. You know, I was I was reflecting on it, and I think there's always going to be the next thing, the next goal, the next accomplishment, something that we can be doing more of. But I feel really grateful to have accomplished so much in my life, and and same. If if I were to die today, I'd be good with it. You know, yeah. I, I I do my best to try and show up, smile. You know, be be loving and respectful towards everybody that I come across, whether it's a, a homeless dude on the street or a billionaire, Kurt you know whatever yeah and and i think that at least in the last few years i would be happy i i would say you know maybe four or five years ago i'd be like oh man it's not my time i got a lot more work to do and even though i feel like there's still a lot more work to do i think i think that i'm i'm living the way that my highest self would want me to be living for the most part. Of course, there's always more work and, yeah. and progress, but for the most part, I'm, I'm good with it. And I think that peace of mind really kind of ties into the topic we're going to get into t- today and in that it allows you to kind of start dictating your pace. And at least that's what I found for me is, you know, in the previous episodes, we talked about kind of slowing down and just enjoying moments. I think I'm able to do that now Because I don't necessarily feel like I have to be going 8,000 miles an hour. I don't feel like I have to prove anything to anybody else. I don't, like, I'm comfortable. Like, I'm happy with my life. I'm glad what I created. Now, do I need to do certain things more of? Absolutely. But I don't wake up every day like I used to in my 20s, maybe in my 30s, where I just felt the weight of every day. Like, I have to do, I have to do, I have to do. Now, I get to do. You know, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a switch of a word, but I get to do a lot of things. I don't have mm-hmm. to do a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And, and I think for me, that goes back to just the choices we made, the people we've surrounded ourselves with, and knowing um, that there's so much abundance in the world. I don't have to stress every day about will I get enough. I know if I show up and just be who I'm supposed to be, I'll have plenty. Nice, nice. I can I can learn a thing or two about about having that mindset of I get to do because I definitely often wake up with that I got to do I got to do so. But so I think that I think that just comes with I'm not gonna say maturity because you know we're all mature in our stage but I think it comes with life experience mm-hmm. and there was plenty of times in my life where I woke up every day feeling like I had to do I had to go to work I had to do this I had to do that and just that word doesn't wreak enjoyment right if i tell you i have to go do something like that doesn't conjure images of me and loving doing it but even if i have to do the same task and i say hey i get to go to practice today yeah i get to go work out and push my body so that it it lets me have a nice long life Mm. versus i have to spend an hour in a gym it's the same exercise it's just two different ways of framing it yeah you know and i think for me that's come as I've gotten older and realizing how much of my time I spent dreading what I was supposed to do instead of enjoying that I had the opportunity to do it. And, you know, for a lot of people, we don't even get to that clarity of thought until there's an accident or a death or a near-death experience or we lose somebody close to us and then we reflect and, and Maybe it's from police work or whatever, being around a lot of people that didn't get to see their lives finish the circle. I realize I'm blessed. You know, like this isn't our normal recording time, right? We, we flip schedules because we got a lot of stuff going on. I could say like we could be like, oh, we have to go record. Let's go record. Mm-hmm. No, we don't have to do this. This is a blessing that you and I spend this time talking what we talk about and that people actually like to listen to it yeah we get to do we this. get to do this and how much of our life do we actually get to do versus we have to do mm. amen amen to that so for me yeah i get to do a lot of things if i die tomorrow i'm good but yeah getting that book done was definitely something that i i knew i owed myself and i owed the people that helped make me i just wanted to be able to thank them Nice, so. nice, man. We're proud of you. Thanks, my definitely, friend. Yeah. Definitely was a great turnout, and I look forward to watching you continue to, to progress and succeed on your journey. Now You're a big part of it. Appreciate you it. Know, oh, man, I can't tell you how much you mean to me and my family and, and all the On Purpose community because this, you know, guys, we're 
coming up on a year. March will be a year since we launched this thing. And it literally yeah. started with us looking at each other as really an opportunity to just grow mm -hmm. and, and pitched an idea, you know, with nothing. We had nothing that said it was going to work. No market analysis, no business plan. Just literally like, hey, let's try this. Yeah. And and I think that's how a lot of good things in life happen. Yep. Sometimes we try to over plan so much we miss natural opportunities. Agreed. You know. Grateful, grateful for you reaching out that day. Who hut? Yeah. Your spot, man. That is, man. Not <laughs> lately since I've been cutting away, but I'll be back after January twenty fifth. Yeah, yeah I just remember when we went in there, you're like, Let's have lunch at Who Hut and <laughs> Andrea hates who hut. Like, it grosses her out watching a sweaty guy back there cooking. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, all right. And we go in there, and you had your, like, who hut membership card. Whatever, right? <laughs> Free meals, bro. They know me over there. I was like, man, how much does he come to who hut? He has a membership card. Hey, man, pick your proteins, pick your veggies, pick your sauces. Can't beat it. No, it seems good as long as you don't mind a sweaty guy flipping it. No, not at, at all, At least man. there you can see it. Yeah. I'm sure most restaurants, the dude's sweaty flipping your food. You just don't see him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, Andrea saw that one time I was like I'm never coming here that's funny <laughs> well I'm your hoo hot out if you're ever craving it man <laughs> you, you, yeah I'll make sure I bring Trey because he smashes it hoo hot yeah young king oh, young gosh. Trey so you know speaking of, of opportunities and accomplishing goals and everything this is a really exciting episode for me because I, I'm just excited to talk about this with you because yeah. this this resonates a lot with me and and that's uh, being a jack of all trades master of none yeah so I, my first question to you, Jared, to start things off is, is first of all, would you consider yourself a jack of all trades? No. No? No. I think at one point in my life I tried to be. I think uh, we masqueraded that as multitasking. And if you couldn't do like four things at once, you weren't a good multitasker. And especially in police work. Like, like they would literally expect mm -hmm. you to drive a car, listen to the radio, look for bad stuff, check your computer. Like, like you can't possibly be good at all that at once. Yeah, it's a lot. And um, so, no, I don't think I, I was a jack of all trades master at none. I, I think. Now I'm getting really good at the few things I do, but I've had to learn. Like, yeah, before when I was younger, I had so much going on. Now I've kind of pared down to what I really enjoy, but I'm a work in progress. Okay. You know, I mean, I think it's still easy for us. Our personality and our willingness to see the good and the opportunity in a lot of situations, I think, leads us to be pulled in more directions than we probably should. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one thing. Andrea is really good for me in kind of setting boundaries and helping me um, because my natural inclination is to try and try something new. And then that takes away from what I should have been working on. Yeah. I remember when we first started the podcast, anybody who would email us, you'd be like, yeah, I'll meet with you, I'll meet with you, I'll meet with you. And uh, just uh, to the point where you're like, dude, I need to stop. Well, stop you saying, told yeah. me that. Yeah. I was like, dude, you got to, you know, you'd be charging for this, first of all. One, two, it's cutting into your time. But no, I, I hear you. And I was that. paying. I was meeting with him and paying for coffee. I was losing on you know, <laughs> It was good, though. It was yeah. a good part of my experience. But, um, it's a tendency I have to fight is to see opportunities and not want to go and be like, okay, wait a second, I'm supposed to be working on this. And I think that honestly the book was a good exercise for me because I really had to to get it out on my deadline that I self-imposed. I had to really focus like them last four months and work with an editor and, and do things I was uncomfortable with but that, that I had to stay focused on or they weren't going to get done. They weren't like my natural strengths. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? How do you feel with that one? Hmm, I would say I, I would say that I try or think that I am a jack of a lot of traits. Yeah. I think a big part of that was that I always, I, I, even as a kid, I never wanted to be bad at anything. Yeah. You know, e even if it wasn't my natural inclination, like I was like, oh, I can do that or, or I can be kind of good at that and, and always wanted to do a lot of things. I, I think also was the way my father's mentality towards everything I did, you know, like you got to be the best, you got to be the best at this and like A plus, best athlete, best this, best that. And, and there was no, there was no like not being good at something. It was just like always the highest expectation, which I think is a double-edged sword because yeah. – 
it really did give me drive to continuously pursue excellence. But at the same time, I'm barely recently learning that there's just some things that I'm not good at and that I don't need to waste time trying to be good at, especially in my business. When I first started it and my old business partners could, could vouch for this as well is that I would want to have my hands in everything. Yeah. Know everything that's going on, try to progress a little bit here, a little bit here. And I think that that has been something that has held me back for a while of reaching my full potential. And if I'm not a jack of all trades, I am, I take action towards a lot of good opportunities, which can hold you back from, from creating opportunities that can be really, really great. Yeah. And I think I wanted to ask, how did you, cause I, I, you know, we have a lot of parents that listen to the show and actually a lot of, a lot of younger folks, teenagers and stuff. So how did you feel knowing your dad expects you to be the best at anything you did? So it gives you drive, but did you also feel pressure to try to live up to that all the time? Oh yeah, definitely. And how did that manifest itself? Do you remember any issues where you just didn't want to do it because you didn't want that pressure? Yeah, but I also, I also felt like it wasn't really an option. To yeah. be honest, to to not to not do it. Really, you know, there was definitely a lot of I don't want to, and, and a lot of arguments. Well, all these other kids don't do this and that, and da da da. da. But I think that for me, it, it was just kind of like I had to get it done. And I think also since my dad had a very, you know, he he was a loving father, but he wasn't he he didn't do it like through through words, and he was very like gift oriented, give you money, get you know. I, ah. I had a, my first car was a Mercedes, like things like that, to where because I got it straight A's and because I was doing well. But for for him, it, he would hardly ever ever said I'm, I'm proud of you or, or right. good job. It was always like, well, how can you do better, or or how how can you be number one if you were number two or or whatever it is. So I think that a big part of me always wanted to impress him. That I never I never really gave up on trying to become become the best at, at everything that I that I pursued and maybe not the best, but my best. And I would always try and, I mean, even, even in my college days, you know, I was, I was a a leader in my fraternity. I was a leader in the business school and and just had a lot of other things going. I had some martial arts stuff going, wanted to be social, the grades that that I wanted to have everything at a high level. And I brought that over to my career and I'm realizing that it's, you know, we can have anything, but we can't have everything. Right. And I'm really trying, especially for me, 2020, to, to narrow my focus and become masterful in just a few things. That's awesome. What, uh, how are you going to prioritize those? How are you? So here's the, for our audience, and I think this will be good tactical tips for them. You are an opportunist and you are a people pleaser. Uh, you're very much in tune with wanting people to like you, and you see the good in almost every situation. Like, I, I can't remember I, hearing you speak bad about hardly anything. For sure. So now how do you prioritize staying on what your what your priority is now versus get distracted and taking on new priorities? It's like this fight, for example, you know? Yeah. Uh, like when we told you, like, okay, we got you this fight, but you got to train this many days. You got to put in this much work. That was kind of our expectations that we agreed on. So like, I'm sure you've had to pass up other opportunities in that time. For sure. How do you prioritize that? Like what are, what are you? what's your metrics or what are you using to weigh where you spend your time? Well, right now is a perfect example of, of time being the most valuable commodity yeah. that we have. With my fight being less than two weeks away, that is the top priority. I'm not missing training. I'm not missing meals. I'm not missing cardio workouts for anything, even though there are big things going on at work, big things going on in social, big other things happening. Yeah. But this is my North Star. This is my primary priority because it's the most time sensitive. And because I made a commitment, that's another thing, is I have a very difficult time going back on something that I've committed to. Yeah. 
and it's it's only been very few times in my life where I've had the the capacity to be like, you know what? Even though I committed to this, I, I have to take it back, and, and I can't yeah. do this anymore. Uh, and I think that's also a double-edged sword as well because, of course, you, you want to commit to things. But I think for me, I have to just be a, more strategic and have a better process of really deciding – when to to commit to something especially if it's going to take you know reasonable amount of of, yeah. of time and energy yeah and that's I, I like what you said though you committed kind of to other people and that kind of ties back to that accountability piece for a lot of people is when you make a commitment and you other people are counting on you it's hard not to get it done but if you never would have shared this fight dream and you kept it to yourself. It would have been easy to be like, ah, I'll put it off and go do this. I'll go do that. Right. Um, so I think that's important. I think that's why, you know, your circle is so important and being accountable to others because sometimes it will hold you kind of on task when naturally we may drift a little bit. Yeah. And that's exactly what I do when I make, when I make a commitment is share it to the world. Yeah. You know, let everyone know, hey, I'm fighting this time, blah, blah, blah. Dad Grat, same thing. Hey, I exercise gratitude every day. I want to influence 1 billion people by 2030. Do all this, you know, to where to where I'm sharing it. And then it becomes even harder to, to go back, to go back yep. on something. But that's, you know, at this point in my life, it's going to be something that I, that, that I have to do, just not, not very often, especially if I get better at s- selectively choosing. Yeah, because I, I, cause I think that's a bad practice to get into for people listening. If you are constantly going back on commitments mm-hmm. because you're over committing, that's not a good habit to have. No. Nope. Um, you're better off just telling people no up front than promising them you'll be there, I'll do this, and then you don't show up. Mm-hmm. Or, hey, I'll get this done, and then you don't do it. Um, I would much rather, and I would respect if you're just like, hey, dude, I don't have time for this. Like, I love you. I appreciate it, but it's just not in my realm right now. Mm-hmm. I would respect that. Yeah. But if I'm counting on you and then you let me down, that's a whole different dynamic. Yep. You know, so I, that's one thing I agree with you is I try not to go back on commitments I made. Um, now, I think we all have at some point. Because what happens is you're trying to please everybody. You're trying to, to do everything. And infinite it's easy when an idea comes to you think like oh i can squeeze that in that's gonna take me 20 minutes nothing takes 20 minutes you know it always takes more time than you think and then all of a sudden now you're robbing peter to pay paul because i was supposed to promise you this but i'll steal a little bit of that time to take care of this and then you just get into that never-ending cycle and for me when i found myself in that places in my life i didn't enjoy it you know, I, I didn't enjoy it, and I didn't feel good about what I was doing because I knew I was cheating you to take care of this, cheating them to take care of that, and not like cheating like I'm stealing from you, but I told you I was going to do something, and now I'm doing it like half ass. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cheating, mm-hmm. right? I, I should have just told you, yeah, I'll do it, but I'm going to do it half ass. You cool with that? You just said no way. But I told you, like, yeah, dude, I'm in. Let's go, let's go. And then, then I know I'm cheating you. And I think that's a bad tendency to create for yourself, and I think it's bad energy in your life because then that kind of attracts those people back to you, mm-hmm. the people that are going to promise you things and never deliver. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fascinating how that works of attracting people that are operating in, in your similar frequency. I mean, sh- just recently, man, like talking about – it's like as soon as you – publish your book yeah like three people in my network are like oh yeah i'm an author i'm an author i'm an author and I, <laughs> I was like oh shit like <laughs> authors and speakers and and uh it's 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 been pretty cool yeah it's amazing how that happens so yeah i'm, I'm obviously working on narrowing my focus yeah. becoming a, a master at a few things instead of trying to take on all these new skills for you jared you know, you, you got out of your career, 21 year career, and it's been pretty new to where you've had basically full full control of of your schedule, of your days, of your time, yeah. and you've been experimenting yeah. with, with different ways of structuring it. I know that you said that this year you wanna you wanna include a little bit more space because this this first year was kind of back to back to back to back to yeah. back. So, what would you say are the top priorities for you that that are perhaps you can call them priorities or, or maybe the the trades that that you want to master where are you best putting your time and how do you how do you decide that that's 
that that's most important. Yeah, it's it's interesting. As we were prepping for this, I was thinking, and actually, I, it comes back to something you told me. I can't remember if it was on an episode or just in a conversation we were having where we were talking about each other's strengths. I think it was our strengths and weaknesses when neither of us could even identify weaknesses because we're like, we don't spend any time there. Like, I don't even know what those yeah. are. <laughs> and you were like, one of your strengths is building community. Mm-hmm. And I had never thought of it that way. And then when I analyzed my life, I'm like, okay, where am I in my happy place? My family, which is a community. The gym, it's a community. Coaching, right? Whether it's our workshops, the podcast. I'm happiest when I'm doing things that involve bringing people to me. Mm. And it took me a while, right? Because like, you know, there's a lot of people that want some of my time. And there's a lot of people that want to partner on this or have me help with that. But really for me, I, that's kind of that barometer now is that my building community, does this build me a community? If it doesn't, if it's an isolated thing, if it's, you know, good for this one little group but not for the mass, then, I, then to me that's not where I want to spend my time. Mm, that's good. Right? Because like you said, like I was going and I was having one-on-one coffee meetings, one-on-one co- – but literally I was getting asked the same questions. I was having a lot of the same conversations because, you know, people were coming off the podcast. They were following the blogs, whatever. Well, better – instead of doing – 20 one-on-ones for the same conversation let's do a workshop and bring 20 people together create a community now they're supporting each other and so but i never thought of it that way till you told me like dude you're great at building community now and then when i stopped and looked at my days those are when i'm happiest is when i have my communities around and i'm contributing and they're taking care of each other and we're all growing so to me that's what i want to focus on this year is really mastering my communities and not not being pulled in so many directions that are kind of isolated, but always kind of balancing it out. It's like, is this good for a community? Does this build a community? And if it does, then, then I want to invest in it. And if it doesn't, then I don't. Because I know that when I get pulled in those things that are like good for one person or better for them than for us, I don't enjoy that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that even makes sense, but yeah, no, it does. I I love that. So let me let's dig a little deeper. How does that look when you're prioritizing your day, for yeah. example? How does that look when you have you know a list of tasks you need to get done, and then you prioritize? Do you do you literally ask yourself like, what task can I do that's building community? How, how does that? Honestly, work a lot of them don't. Well, I mean, there, I have my tasks. I go to the grocery store. Right, like right. My life stuff does. But no, like if I'm taking meetings or people are requesting meetings, like I literally ask that, like, okay, what community does this serve? Mm. Is this self-serving? Is this meeting just to benefit one person? Mm -hmm. Then I'm not interested. Mm. But like today I met with one of the guys in the book, and that meeting was to talk about teaching people that he can reach and and having a – well, that's a new community, so I'm interested in that. Mm. And I I think to me it's a kind of easy metric there because – you kind of know when you meet with someone if they're there to take from you or they're there to share and give with you. And if you're there sharing and giving, you're building community. But the first hint I get that you want to take and you're not going to give anything in return, I, I, I don't want to spend time there. And I think like with you kind of helping me and Andrea holding me accountable, that's where I've probably gotten better it is not, not spending as much time to get to that decision point but picking it up sooner. Mm, that's good. It's good stuff. I'm going to keep that in mind for a lot of a lot of my meetings and stuff that I do in business. Well, especially cuz like you, you like you you bring great energy mm-hmm. and you're very outgoing and, and I think sometimes one of our faults is it's easy to be taken advantage of. It's easy to be brought into the next great idea because we're always looking for them. Not like out of desperation like, "Oh, I got to have this," but because we just like to see the good in people. And the good in situations, and I think for me, I spent too much time being pulled into self-serving and selfish situations. That, And I knew it. Like, I could feel it. But you're still like, oh, let me explore this. Let me see where this goes. And now I'm like, no, I'm, I'm cutting it off uh, because you're absolutely right. Dude, our time is so short. If you're a taker, I, I, if you're a taker, you're not going to fit in with everything else I have going. Yeah. And as soon as I identify it and, and don't waste any more time, then we're all better off. Yeah. 
Yeah, that makes total sense. So with you, that that's awesome that you have kind of that, that guiding North Star of, is this building community? Yeah. You know, asking yourself that question and that really being a filtering mechanism for, for actions and projects that you take on. Are there things that you're seeing now as an entrepreneur that you need to cut back on that, that you've been putting time into and that you feel may not be a priority, but you continuously to, to put time into? Yeah, I think I still work on not taking as many meetings as I, or taking too many meetings. Mm. I think I still could cut back on that. Um, I, I think the other thing that I need to work on as far as my entrepreneur side and just building all the businesses is probably I don't know like just structuring a little bit more because you know I have multiple businesses so sometimes I, I I'll just deal with whatever issues are coming up that day for that business yeah and what I need to do is like be like okay this four hours is only for this one of my businesses mm -hmm. nothing else gets done here I don't care because very little for myself is emergency anymore right? right it's not police work um but sometimes I still treat it like police work and whatever emergency comes in is where I go. Mm -hmm. And then like one aspect of business won't get touched for three days when I know I should have been doing a little bit every day. So I think, I guess, long story short there, I, I need to be better at structuring out so that everything I'm working on, my probably there's three big ones, each get their equal time to continue the momentum building right between the gym the law enforcement stuff the podcast stuff like those are my three basic umbrellas um just i, I think just make sure i maintain a momentum in all those areas instead of kind of bouncing back and forth do you think that you could achieve a, a higher level if maybe you cut one of those out you know like let's say you have multiple businesses. What yeah. if you just What if you just focused on one and and sold the other ones or or, or didn't put enough time into it? Yeah. Well, why do you Why do you think that at at this point in your life you want to be uh, having multiple? More than one? Yeah. Honestly, dude, they make me happy. They literally make me happy. Like, you know, jujitsu, MMA. I I couldn't imagine if I like. What would I do if I didn't go to the gym every day? Yeah. That's a huge piece of my community, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so that can't go away. Well, coaching cops, teaching cops how to be better, how to have life after police work. I feel like I owe them. Mm -hmm. That was 21 years of my life. I can't just walk away from them. Mm -hmm. This community, like this is this is like truly, this adventure is one of the things I'm like, dude, I can work on this all day, every day, and never get tired of it. So I think... I think what I'm doing there, all three of those meet the criteria I talked about earlier. They are all building communities. Mm. Now, can I be more disciplined in where they get time? For sure. For sure, I got to work on that. But honestly, I see almost all three of those as the same business. They're just different delivery systems. Yeah. Right? Like I'm serving people in all three. The gym, police specific, and the on-purpose community. But they're all building people. They're all empowering people. They're all coaching people. So now if I had one, like if I own, say, a plumbing company, nothing against plumbers, but it's not my thing, and I said, oh, I hate working on my plumbing I would sell it. Yeah. But I think right now they all meet the criteria, and they're all helping build community. And, and, and I feel like when I'm in any of those three, there's a mutual exchange of good energy. So I don't want to get rid of them. Could I? And who knows? You might be right. If I sold two and only focused on one, might one skyrocket? Maybe. Yeah. But maybe it wouldn't. Well, I think you said the key thing there is that they all make you happy. Yeah. And I think that you know, being having a lot of things going on is okay. I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm doing it. But I think what you said is exactly right. That you have to constantly try and manage your time. Like I was saying, MMA makes me happy. I, I, I love training. I love going to trials. I love jiu-jitsu. I love martial arts. I've loved it since I was a kid. However, I know that after the fight, I'm not going to be going to the gym yeah. five times a week, getting eight practices in a week, yeah. training as hard as I'm training right now. Right now, it's it's not sustainable for me to to, to do all long the other. Long term. Right, long term. Yeah. You know, un, unless I just, out of nowhere, I'm like, you know what? I want to 
this is going to be my career. I want to be a professional fighter, whatever. But that's that's not the path that I'm on. To where I never want to I never want to cut that out. But after this fight, I know I'm going to be relieved to be able to cut back yeah. a lot, and and but still have that. You know, for 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 me, I, I think in the business realm is really where I'm like, I need to I, I need to narrow my focus because not everything I do as an entrepreneur necessarily makes me happy. Yeah. Right. I I mean I I get to do it all. I'm very grateful and fortunate yeah. that I can be learning. But I know that having having multiple businesses is is a double edged sword. You know, you have l- multiple opportunities. You can you can build cohesiveness. But I think it comes back to building a community. Is yeah. that it's more possible when you have good people around yeah. you and a good team. And and for me, I think I think that's uh, that's something that I'm that I'm lacking right now. Yeah. So it's, it's well, you had a lot of turnover, mm-hmm. and a lot of it fell on your shoulders. So you went from having a full staff and a team to being a one man show, mm-hmm. which I think brings different pressures, different tasks, um, and quite honestly, a lot of I want to show you I can do this on my own type ego, mm-hmm. right? Like I mean, you didn't buy out business partners to be like, ah, we're bankrupt. Mm-hmm. Like that makes no sense. So, so you, there's a little added pressure to it, and um, and I think pressure's good at times, but there's also times that pressure can kind of cause us to lose focus or to lose the change the lens at which we're viewing what we're actually allowed to do, mm-hmm. and see it more in a I have to do versus I get to do light. Yeah, yeah, definitely. One one thing. One thing that I've always put time towards is uh, Toastmasters, yeah. public speaking leadership organization. And one thing that I noticed that I, that I want to make sure that I that, that I never do is that, I, like like I got, I went to the higher level conferences where it's like three states combined, the district conference and, and competitions. And I met a lot of people that were like, oh, I've been in Toastmasters for thirty years, yeah, twenty thirty years, but they. St- they, I wasn't that impressed, you know, to where I could see, and, and I still see some people in certain clubs that are just kind of there going through the motions and, and not progressing. And I think yeah. that that's something that can be really easy to do and almost kind of be undercover to where you don't even notice it. You know, you, you think you're going to the gym, like you could be going to trials every week and not getting better yeah. and just going through the motions. Same thing with Toastmasters, not getting better, going through the motions. And I think what I've gotten better at and what, I, what I'm going to need to continue to be aware of and what I encourage our community to be aware of is you can be a jack of multiple trades, but make sure that you're measuring your progress yeah, in, 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 in some way to really become masterful in some. Like, Don't be just doing the same practice you've been doing. Exactly. Like martial arts, yeah, I'm going to cut back, but it's always going to be a part of my life. I know that. You know, uh, public speaking, <clears throat> whether or not it's Toastmasters that I'm going to every week, always going to be a part of my life. I know that. I know that these are things that I want to continue to master, right? And a true master knows that practice never ends. Yeah. Know, that there's always... There's always getting better. So for me, I know public speaking, martial arts, business, mostly related to the speaking sales community yeah. realm are going to be things uh, that I want to master. What about what about for you? What are what are things that you feel like you you have masterful skills in or that you're you're looking to master Especially in this year, what are you? What are you putting yeah. a lot of time to? Um, I want to refine my speaking. Okay. You know, I, I feel like a lot of times I'm still not as polished as I should be. Um, that I, I, I think it's a double edged sword. I'm very. I feel like I have a good EQ sense with my audience, and I can kind of see what's working and you know what they're connected with and share that. Um, but I think at some points that's hard to market because like to be a, a highly sought after speaker, you really have like one key speech you deliver. Yeah. And, and they know like, okay, this is what he's talking about. Whereas even I don't know sometimes, right. you know? Um, so I think just refining things. I, I think like, I think I'm still raw in some of my speaking, some of my writing, some of the stuff that's, which is good because it's helped propel me where I'm at. But now I think it's time to get better and it's the time to, 
I just get a little more serious and realize, like, okay, this works. Like, I'm good at it. But it's just like, you know, like if you're a good athlete or you're good, but you, you don't keep refining, well, then everybody else is going to pass you up because they were also good, but they worked harder than you. Yeah. So I, so I think I need to work on that. Nice. You know, that refinement. And I want to learn Spanish. Okay. Yeah, I nice. just, uh, I think I we talked about it, but on. Uh, Still in the realm of communication. Yeah, it's, and it's building community. Like, it, I yeah. felt terrible when I went to this little uh grocery store up on North College and it's, it's run by you know a uh, Hispanic family and they're great people like I could just tell they were good people and I couldn't charades. talk to them yeah. <laughs> well, making like, hand motions yeah well the, you know they ran you know the little old lady she seemed so nice she went out back and got I'm guessing maybe a grandson or a nephew and he came in and translated but I was like gosh this and then I started thinking like how like that's her life like how many places does she go and nobody can communicate with her And I, I was like, I want to learn. Dang. So, pues, si quieres aprender español, podemos practicar. Oh man! So if you want to learn some Spanish, yeah, we can practice. Yeah, yeah, boy, I picked up practical. <laughs> See, dude, I'm pretty good on my Spanglish. Like, I get one word per sentence yeah. most of the time. There you go. And you gotta I, start somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do want to do that because you know, Andrew and I want to travel, and we love being warm. Oh, yeah, South America. So I'd love to go to Mexico. You know, I'd love mm -hmm. to go to South America. But I I want to feel confident that I can communicate. And and honestly, like, how can I learn their stories if I can't talk to them? Yeah. You know, and like, imagine how many cool stories people of other cultures have that I've never even heard about that I want to learn. Definitely. So that that's that's my goal is just mastering my crafts, building communities, giving back, and uh, – Making sure that I'm not the same guy in 2021 that I was in 2020. Yeah. Should uh, have you considered joining a Toastmaster club? You thought about that at all? No. No. I, I kind of that's your space. Bro. <laughs> I let you rock your toast. Hey, masters. hey, you don't have to join mine. Yeah. No, I, I haven't. Um, I have been looking at Babbel. It's a For new Spanish? online language program. Cool. That's like a monthly subscription. It looks like it's a pretty slick way to learn. Nice. So I've been researching how to learn Spanish. Um. Yeah. Cool. What about you? What do you want to master this year? Um. I want to say master. It's funny because this is this is a an extra thing that yeah. I'm adding on. But <laughs> but I I really want to. I feel like this this fight in a sense is is a milestone, almost a graduation yeah. point for me in the physical realm. You know, I've done, uh, I did a men's physique show, which is bodybuilding. I've, I've competed in, in lots of wrestling and jujitsu tournaments. And I feel like I have a staple uh, of health in my life that that'll, that'll never go away. And I'm, I'm excited to, to dial that back, still train, but really focus more on developing my intellectual capacity in my mind. And I was doing a lot of research on brain health and how certain things like languages and music yeah. really d develop the mind, writing, art, all these things. And, and I've always been very dominant in the physical realm, but I don't do, I don't have many creative practices like writing, like painting, like music. So I, I think I said this in a previous episode that I'm going to be taking some piano skills yeah. uh, or piano lessons. Don't think I'm going to master it, but I really want to take more time to include that in in some of my productive leisure activities. Yeah. And I really want to become masterful at, at speaking. I don't think I told you this actually, but my club, I'm um, giving the Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech oh, nice. on Martin Luther King Day. That's Monday. At the, yep, at the uh, Estes Park Library. And I practiced it at my Toastmasters Club. And it was really cool because it's been a really long time to where I felt I, I got goosebumps. You Are you know, reading Martin Luther King's speech? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. I'm, okay. I'm reading his speech, and I'm and I'm trying to give it like he did. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. And, and, and really, you know, the inflection points and everything. But it's been a long time since I have felt, like, divine in reciting words, like, to where I was getting goosebumps. Yeah. And, and, and it, it really brought me back to that love and passion that I've that I have for speaking, but that I just haven't felt in a really long time. So for me, I, I want to become a little bit more masterful in uh, communication, but also just kind of the, the intellectual realms and not put such a heavy focus on, uh, on the physical realm. Nice. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Um, what do you think your connection to that speech is? Just know what it stands for, or? Well, I was asked. I was so asked. It's an honor. Yeah, it, it you know r- really humbling because I I tend to give speeches that are more pretty deep, you know, pretty deep speeches. So I was asked. I think I can connect to that speech in a lot of ways. You know, I'm not African-American, but I have dealt with a lot of racism in my life and things like that, being uh, half Arab and and half Mexican, uh, to where I can understand being judged uh, by your color, by your race, by your religion. Uh, I've experienced that. I can understand that. And it was, uh, unfortunately, very applicable to a lot of the media today. When I was – and I've never – I've never read or much less recited the entire I have a yeah. team speech. Yeah. But some of the words and lines in that really gave me goosebumps and really was like, holy shit, this was in 1960 or 1963, whatever it yeah. was, in the 60s. Yeah. And it still really applies. So it was like, whoa, you know, maybe maybe we need to listen to this a little bit more. So I'm excited. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really honored to give it and – I, I think it just speaks to speaks to a lot of what we need in the world. Just you know, unity, community, coming together, showing love, helping each other grow, be the best we can be, and that's what I'm gonna do. That's awesome. I'm proud of you for doing that. Thanks, man. That I'm excited. Cool. Awesome. We should get some practice for these listeners. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we got a couple steps for purposeful practice this week. Got a, uh, a few listeners who earned an on-purpose T-shirt. So good job on that. Continue to submit your purposeful practice to us. So the first step of this practice is identify your top two priorities and explain why these are your top. Then identify things that you put time towards that are not in your top priorities. Three, what steps must you take to put your primary priorities to the top of your list? Yeah. And then most importantly, email us your practice to onpurpose.official at gmail.com. Awesome, man. And we really appreciate you guys listening. What This is episode 44. Uh, we've got big things coming up that we're excited about. And, uh, man, please share this. You know, with your friends, your colleagues, give us a rating on iTunes or Spotify or iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening, and let people know that we're out there because there's room for plenty in our community, and we need your help to make sure they know where to look for us. That's right. So we appreciate you all. Remember, team, life is far too short to live any other way than on purpose. We'll see everybody next week. Mm